My name is Ruth Clark. I'm a professor at Nova Southeastern University in the Business School. Rodney Lawson is one of my alumni from the Masters in International Business program. I've known Rodney for about 10 years now, and I can tell you that I've seen him develop. He's gone from being a very inspirational corporate leader to his new career in motivational, inspirational leadership. Rodney is just a wonderful person. He builds his world around his bedrock value, and that's what he brings. Hi, my name is Mary Boucher. I just want to thank uh, Rodney for coming in. This was really, uh, really great. It was really inspirational. Like, you know, you had a great energy. Uh, and it's just really nice to hear from somebody who started at the bottom and went to the top. I can really relate you know, to that. it's not quite the same, but it's, uh, you know, I really related to a lot of the things you were talking about. Um, a lot of the stuff about, you know, having to work on your image, how to work on your speech. Um, I kind of also grew up with a much rougher way of speaking and, uh, you know, having to get in the working world and realize, yeah, you can't go in there and talk so like that. people aren't going to respond. Um, and I think it's something that a lot of people that find themselves kind of stuck and stagnant and they're just like, they don't know how to move forward and they just don't realize how important these kind of things are, just little things about their image, uh, things about their own personal motivation, about their own uh, level of optimism and their own belief in themselves. Uh, and you know, sometimes it's a simple but thing. Sometimes you just got to have someone tell you. And you know, Rodney's great at telling it in a way that's relatable, you know, and given tons of stories, personal experiences. you feel like you're going through his life with him when he's talking. Hi, my name is David Lau. I just had a presentation with Rodney and he gave us some really, really valuable advice, especially for me as a young entrepreneur in starting my businesses. Um, it was really motivational, really thorough. Um, Rodney's a great guy and I've learned a lot from this, from this event. My name is Marta Coyazo. I had the pleasure of listening to Rod. Especially love the part about how you keep your values and you keep your beliefs and you work with those and that's what really makes you successful because people learn that you're genuine, that you really walk the talk. That's the best thing that you can do for your people. Thank you so much, Rodney. My name is Ricardo Fiorani. This was one of the most inspirational and motivational speech I've ever heard. I truly want to thank uh, Mr. Rodney for giving us this speech has really inspired me to follow uh, my dreams of being a manager. My father, growing up, I look at my father as two sides of a coin. Because on one side, he did so much from an abusive format to help develop me. And then on the other side, he did so much from a positive aspect to help develop. My father was a functioning alcoholic with a very, very uh, addictive personality. He was an avid gambler, and he put our family through a lot of turmoil growing up. I could also say that my father is my antagonist, but he's also my hero. Why? I've never taken a single drink of alcohol in my life is because my father was a functioning alcoholic. Now think about that, going through college, playing sports, having friends, high school, college, work, recognition ceremonies at work, and a lot of people were drinking, right? And then sometimes my values were tested. Sometimes I would have employees. Sometimes I would have bosses that took part in alcohol and they wanted me to take part but I would not. I was not gonna allow it to go against my values. That's who I am, and they need to respect that, regardless of the circumstances. One of the other things I got from my father is standing firm on knowing who I am. You know, when I first stepped foot in the corporate world, at the young age of 18, I'll never forget the experience that I had and it still burns with me today. I was excited. It was the first job I had where I got to wear a shirt and a tie. I didn't have to do physical labor. I was in an air conditioned environment in the summertime, in a heated environment in the wintertime. So I go through training for a week to be this awesome salesperson, and I come out of sales training after the first week, 
And there were nine of us that graduated out of this training class, and we went to our respective teams of supervisors. Me and one other guy, we went to this particular supervisor. On the first day, and she said, here, she handed us a piece of paper, and she said, write down a short-term goal and a long-term goal. So I wrote down on my piece of paper, my long-term goal, I wanted to be a vice president. And my short-term goal, I wrote down, I wanted to hit my settlement plan for the month. She collected a piece of paper and went on about her way. On the third day, she called me in on a conference room meeting. And I was doing really well. I had made several sales on the first day and several sales on the second day. So I was doing extremely well. I was out selling some of the people who had been there for months. So I'm thinking she's calling me in and we're gonna have this great conversation. I'm excited, I'm in this, this, this new environment. And she pulls out this folder and she takes the piece of paper out and she says, let's look at your goals. And I'm like, okay, great. She said, well, let's look at your short-term goal. She said, your short-term goal is to hit your sales plan for the month. I said, yes. She said, well, you're gonna do extremely well at that. She said, you're, you're gonna be one of the best sellers in here. You're, 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 you're already way ahead. So I don't think that's gonna be an issue. So let's focus on your long-term goal. I said, okay, why did, you, why did you put this down? I said, because I like this environment and it's something that I wanna do. I, I wanna be a vice president. I wanna move up in the corporate world. <laughs> and she said, have you thought about anything else? I said, no. She asked me about two or three more questions and finally she just got frustrated. And I'll never forget sitting on the other side of that table in that conference room and she said to me, Rodney, you might want to choose something that's a little more realistic. Now let me tell you what happened inside me internally. Okay? On one side, I was hurt. I was hurt. I was disappointed. I was broken down. I felt belittled. On the other side, I was angry. I was mad. I felt disrespected. Now I had to control those emotions at that moment and I had to tell myself and reiterate, Roddy, don't do something to cause you to lose this job. This is a pretty good job. I didn't say what I wanted to say, but here's what I did say. You asked me to write my goals down on that piece of paper and that's exactly what I did. With all due respect, you do whatever you feel as though you need to do with that piece of paper, but you'll never ever get me to change one single word. Can I go back and finish making my sales? She said, sure. Now, I was able to say that because I knew who I was, because I knew what my father taught me on this side, okay? That's the anger coming out. That's the challenge. I'm a challenger, because she's challenging me. So I wasn't gonna accept the fact that because you work in the corporate world, because you were in a leadership position, because you're a supervisor over people, that I should just accept the fact that you're gonna tell me what I can and cannot accomplish? No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. I'm not going to accept that. That's one of the things that I got from my father on the good side. On that day, that timid kid, 18 years old, is not the same person that you guys are looking at today. She was looking at what she saw on the outside. And what she saw on the outside, again, is not what you see today. I talked with a lot of grammatical errors, use slang, colloquialisms. I wasn't as professional in my dress. There was a lot of things that I needed to work on. But see, there's a saying, if you look at a person on the outside, they can't get any better, but if you look at a person on what they have on the inside, they can become great. I knew that there were two things that I needed to do to be successful. Number one, have a passion. Have a burning desire and a passion to be successful. And number two, just keep an open mind so that I can continue to educate myself and develop myself. Because I knew that some people were going to evaluate me before I even opened my mouth. And I wanted them to think something positive just by my presence. I had to improve my communication. I had to improve my grammar. I had to improve my, my vocabulary. There's a lot of things I needed to work on but I was willing to do it. You see, she didn't see it, and that's okay. First rule, never let them change you. Rule two, do you to the fullest. To the fullest. And never be ashamed to. You just good at what they can't do. And they